Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin, Friday, March 27th, 2015, and the time has come to test Levinix on multiple platforms. So as usual, I have Mac OS X, Ubuntu, and XP. I'd rather have probably Windows 7, but I have 7 at work. I'll test that there. All loaded, and uh, on uh, here, I think I'll use voice. Okay, Google, Levinix. Oh, it doesn't know Levinix. Let's try again. Okay, Google, Micro Linux for Education. Ah, much better. So we'll grab it there. And grab that download link. And it's about a 20 megabyte download, so uh, that's one of the features here that I kind of promote about this. Let's see how long that... Oh! Less time than it takes to describe it. What do you know? Show in Finder. Pull that guy out here to the upper left. And archive it. Now because these are all fresh installs from off of the internet, you're going to have the security issues when you try and run it for the first time. So maybe that's what uh, one of the themes of this video will be, how to get Linux to run after you do this 20 megabyte download. Regardless of what desktop platform you're on, this is one of the interesting things. Now, oh, watch the demo. That's not what I intended. While it's totally true that Linux is simply built from QEMU, some of the very popular uh, binary distributions that are out there. Uh, and uh, Tiny Core Linux, one of the Linuxes that is really geared towards uh, working in an embedded Linux environment, much more than a desktop environment. Uh, still, I'm pulling quite a few little tricks here to make everything work together uh, just so. And uh, one of them is just getting the thing that you can just double click to download. So. We have it on one more platform to finish. I could have probably shot it across all the platforms with, say, using Dropbox or the built-in VMware Fusion way of downloading uh, or sharing files from the host OS to the uh, guest ones. But you know what? I'm just trying to reproduce the experience most people out there are going to have. Uh, so I already have my download window here. Yep, 20 megabytes is, is not very big. Pull it out there. I missed. Okay, so we have a very similar setup on all three of our uh, all three of our systems. Whoops, I guess I have auto arrange turned on. I won't bother with that. So we drag out of the archive. That was the security warning on Windows XP, I believe, just when you remove something from the archive. Let's get the, to an equivalent sort of status on each of these. And uh, let's look at the icons a little bit larger. So shall we begin? Double click. Pipulate is an application downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Open. Okay, here we go. While that's going, let's start things here. Pipulate. Run in terminal. That looks pretty good. Check on the Mac. Oh, there it is, finished. And we'll get it started on Windows. If you like Windows. Very nice. Ubuntu will be done more quickly. But while that's going on, I'll just remind you here that once you get this far, you do have a server running on localhost, colon, 
80, 80, I believe. There it is, Levinix Beta. So that actually is being served right off of here. And it's got instructions on how to log in and start changing it as a web server. Okay, Windows has pulled ahead a little bit. Hmm. Some sort of error report. TFTP is the service where the host machine transfers over the recipe to build the server over to the guest machine. Um, this is one of the reasons why this isn't just throwing together QMU and TinyCore. It actually has scripts on the host machine that you can edit and spin into any server you like, and it transfers it over and does a build during, uh, during boot up. It actually disappeared from the Windows XP machine. Uh, your results may vary. Things are not always perfect. Let's fire up Firefox and make sure that we can get to the, uh, the server that's available here. And just to remind you, this is a modest little MacBook Air. And we've got three host operating systems, or technically one host operating system and two guests. And each of those guests is a host operating system to its guest in turn, Levinix. So we've got six machines running. Five of them are virtual machines. Oops, 8080. And each of the Levinix guest machines is publishing uh, web hosting services, so we essentially have three entirely different uh, local hosts. Whoops, helps if I spell it right, doesn't it? Three entirely separate uh, web servers. There we go, that's better. Load Chrome. Localhost calling 8080. Okay. Let's go to the next show in front. Voila. No matter what your starting point. You can fire up Levinix, download it in moments, get your own web server running, and set the stage for having your own Pipulate server, get your hands-on experience having a real server under your control so that it can quickly move you along to hardware like the Raspberry Pi, the QBox, or a cloud server like Rackspace or Amazon or Heroku, doesn't matter. Your prices and your results and your experience may vary, of course, I'm going to try and move you along to real hardware as soon as possible because you get the best experience, no matter how cool this might be. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon. And don't forget to subscribe.